switch it over. One of the nice things is we were actually, when we arrived at the fields, it looked very much like a field we've been practicing on at home over the last month. Um, our fields at, at Stanford were very hard, and so we went to a local high school and practiced on their football field. And so when we arrived on the field, it was the same setting we'd be playing in, and so it just felt like another Sunday of practice and took a lot of the pressure off from the start and just made us feel comfortable. Um, what you'll notice throughout the game is that we tend to play a lot of straight-up marks right after the pull to stop the opposition's pull play, to make them go sideways or backwards for a while. We'll poach off the tags, go from the throwing lanes, and hope to get them, make them be impatient or to try a questionable huck. And we did, on that first, the first turnover, we got them to throw it sideways until they threw it into a poach. Here, uh, Great poach D by Wisconsin in the end zone. Our, Jed, our throw, and tunnel a little bit. But it's kind of the nerves of the game. You're looking at Jed and I tend to be the goal throwers near the end zone on our team. We have a lot of guys that will throw goals, but Jed and I look for it the most. And so we, at times, will be prone to tunneling um, because we trust our receivers to get open, and even at high stall count, we expect that they will. I. Uh, so we turned it over, and then Wisconsin got it back here. And again, we're playing pretty good defense. Uh, what you saw there is Danny was marking him straight up, and as soon as the thrower turned to the the dunk, he shifted around and tried to take away the dunk throw. And that's what we teach our markers: is that there's no reason you have to be stationary once you know a guy's committed to the backfield, make that throw as hard as possible, and trust your tag defender to not let the guy go up line. The guy go up line, and that proved. Really focused on that near the end of the year and proved very effective. Here's our typical ISO O. Um, Shrey is to JIT. Wisconsin comes down in their zone, which stops our pull play and we settle into our zone offense. With Shrey and JIT back, they're our primary handlers. Great zone zone players. Very chilly with the disc. Um, Shrey is at, for second second third year player. He's as calm with the disc as anyone I've ever seen. Um, great throws, and he's one that busted it through the cup there. Then Wisconsin transitioned out, and we were patient. We just swung it off the line until we got our ISO cutters open. Um, great bit on D there. Something something happens down the field here. I think Jit stepped on the guy's foot and <laughs> set him down. Um, but right now, you can see our ISO. In the background here, you've got, I'm, I'm isolating the lane. We've got a couple guys out there in the middle. I'm the primary cutter here, a little step in and go, knowing that Jake's favorite throw is at outside of the foot. And we get our first goal, which takes a lot of pressure off. Um, you really want to start to get that first goal in the game, and then you can settle in and you start to realize that it's just a game ultimate like you can play, and you get ready to go play defense. Do you feel like the game might be close? We did. We were early well, excited. I was. We knew how good they were from the way they played against Carlton. We saw the end of that game. Um, but we felt good that we were forcing turnovers and that they weren't scoring really easily. Like their first goal was on a, a stall nine turnaround desperation puck. Here we're again playing great. We got our straight up marks, which are preventing the upfield throws with our guys right on the hip of the guys coming back. Elliott throws on a great mark here, shuffles his feet and gets the foot up at the end to map the disc out of bounds for foot block. That's, we work on our marks a ton, and we probably average two to three point blocks a game and touch maybe another two two discs, and probably force the majority of our turns by just forcing bad throws, forcing throws out of their comfort zone. Um, Elliott's going to be a star handler, he's going to make a great throw there, and Mark got a little pass here, and fifth it. Which is very good character. So he's got great hands. And most likely he'll be the, the Callahan guy for Stanford next year. You'll see some great plays for him later. Um, he's just an outstanding athlete and has really stepped up these last few years. I think he, he's, he was matched up on Russ from Wisconsin a lot. Here's Brandon Hyde. He's got a great mark on the guy. Um, again, straight up marks, forcing him to go sideways, not letting their, their flow go. Called there. 
Who uh, pulled for you guys? We have a few guys that pulled. Dave Kruzma, uh, one of the captains who's a big puller. Jit um, would pull quite a bit. Up until through the first day of Nationals, I pulled a lot. I partially tore something in my shoulder against Santa Barbara, so I cut back on the pulls because it hurt. Um, there, that's Brandon Hyde on defense. He is caught... He's got to be one of the top five man-to-man -man defenders in the country. Uh, he constantly amazes us what he does. He has incredible hops, which lets him go with guys deep. He's not the tallest guy in the world, I don't know, maybe six feet, something like that. And just a fiery defender who gets layout Ds. Um, here we go in our, our flow. Kind of guys, ISO. You'll notice that at any given time, we'll have two, three, four guys behind the disc, and that's the way our offense is designed. We're, we're quite happy if we only have two or three guys down the field, and that they're just isolated on men. And I mean, that, there's a little inside-out break to, to open things up. Some nice pivoting by Nick, faking the break. Gets it to Jeff DiCarlo, throws a pivot and throws the inside-out. Flip to Bart for the goal. Um, DiCarlo did not have months ago and realized that and or he had one only outside in and tend to play it over and so he spent hours of practice working on the inside out flick. You know, a couple months ago he would not have thrown that, but that's what makes our deep so dangerous is that they can all turn around and throw the 30 to 40 yard goal as opposed to just our handlers being able to huck. Um, again we come down here pretty good pull, get our straight up marks on, clog the lanes and make them their first two or three throws are sideways and they're not really going anywhere. Um, but Wisconsin has a good offense. They're very capable of keeping the disc moving, and that's what they do pretty well here. Get the disc moving sideways and walk up the house. At this point, we talk about it and we realize that Wisconsin is a very good fucking team for it. We noticed that against Carlton. And we noticed that the first two points, they completed hucks with four hands. So we talked about it and made a point of denying four hand hucks with our state of marks. We were going to give them backhand hucks, if anything. We were going to make them difficult, but we were willing to give that up in order to stop the flick hucks, which get there faster and more precise. Uh, a lot of college players tend to float their backhand hucks. or They can get them out there, they can throw them far, but they're not as precise, and so it gives a defender a chance to recover. And so we were going to count on our athletes to to get to the Hucks and recover. I think they just had an offsides call that they cut that out. Yeah. Out of that. Actually, it was an offsides. Yeah. <laughs> so here's, they're in a zone again, trying to take us out of our plays at the beginning. A um, little hammer with Cup, then we, we get into our swing with Jit and Shreyas. Uh, bars out on one wing. Uh, looks like Keith's on the other wing right now, and I'm popping with a couple other guys. Uh, we tend to be pretty familiar with our poppers. We've got a two pop three deep and let them run in and out. And we like to move the disc side to side. It looks like Wisconsin came out of it here and they're in man now. Um, just working around. A little bit of chaos right now. We've got some clogging. Um, Jits ISO downfield, which is what I'm looking at here. I'm waiting for him to get open. He makes a great catch here. And gets up, and by far, Jits' favorite break is a low backhand. So we know what that did that there and stepped in the ball and made a great run out uh, on the sideline of the program. That's Jit. Jit's bread, bread and butter brand is that ball. He will throw that all day and he gets any mark and feels confident with it. Bart does a lot of pulling for us too. He's our, and Jeff DiCarlo are kind of the main guys. So you definitely have a better field position. Yeah. We actually, we actually pull pretty well in this game, and one of the reasons is we, we work on pulls a lot in practice, and we spend 10 minutes before every game where our pullers pull, and that's all they do, and they warm up their pulls because we know how important it is. This is a great defensive series. Danny Cox had a great bid there at the guy, and we watch here, Danny's mark again, sliding around, taking away the dump throw, forcing the guy to go back to climb, and Brandon comes out with a lightning quick D, Jim picks it up, throws his out, how that didn't flip to Danny Cox, who's arguably the fastest guy on our team between him and Jeff DiCarlo. Uh, Danny was actually out hurt for a section of the league where I had a stress fracture in the series, um, but was able to make it back for Nationals. We often look to get the quick strike off turnovers, catch them sleeping a little bit and look for the, the huck. Um, Jit and I actually talked 
before the tournament and decided that we, we had to take our shots. Um, and so he came out firing. And you know we were willing to turn it over a couple times, knowing that our team's not going to win if we don't take our shots and open it up deep. Here we came out in the zone, um, but it actually it was a transition zone, three or four, probably fourth rows, what we tend to do. Um, force middle cup, try not to go upfield, and then you know take away their pull play, and then find your man, transition out of it, usually into forehand, um, sometimes in the backhand. I'm not sure what we're in here. Uh, looks like backhand. was our first big game experience getting used to the big crowd. That one in the uh, the semifinals against Grey Tide, which is probably one of the, you know, winning the national championship and everything. I'm certainly going to remember that, but of the other games, that's the one that's going to stick with me, just because it was Santa Barbara. But it was our right. ISO offense. Um, Hunt was one of our deeps. It was about the fourth quarter. I'm not sure we got to get the end of that side. But that's our offense. We also guys in the lane, and we, we'll take our shots. And, that one didn't work, but you know when we turn it over, we tend to turn it over on their goal line and make them go 70 yards and trust our defense to get it back. And here we we go ahead since it was it had some time we reset the zone. Um, last year we were a fairly zone dominant team. We had trouble getting the man covers, but that was that was Brandon Hyde, uh, incredible D, out of nowhere diving around the guy. And here we set up our ends on offense, which is very isolation-based. Try and get one guy out of the front of the stack. That was Brandon High. Find the open space. Throw it against it to him, which is me. Um, put out there, nice grab. Got the uh, a lot of teams don't know how to deal with, or don't deal with that end zone out very well. The first time they see it. Uh, a lot of guys just go back and, you know, go back to the end zone. They try to poach, and we get guys open on the poach. Um, a lot of confusion. And it leads for... A lot of times we get very easy break throws for quick scores. We've got several throwers that are comfortable with the scuba um, at short range, and so we, we get a lot of goals that way. Here again, we're in the zone, trying to stop their their flow and their pull play. And they go sideways. Um, here they they got they broke the cup pretty well here, and trying to get down the field just had a drop um, drops played them in this game. Here Jit picks it up and tries to strike early and throws it out of bounds. Um, Again, that Jit and I decided we were okay with that. Um, we had to do it. <laughs> this is a funny exchange. Um, I was marking, and thrower hit me pretty well with the shoulder and the chest. But you know, there's a chance I may have fouled him. Um, I wasn't sure, and it wasn't worth arguing about. So I just I gave him the call and was just like, next time you hit me in the chest, I'm going to contest it. And so we went off from there. Uh, Nine, I'm not sure his name is. Great thrower. Um, great wide pivots. Very tough to mark. I marked him for a good portion of the game. Um, tried to control him. Uh, Wisconsin working down by the goal line. And here, tough mark plus a poacher plus a good defense caused a turn. Uh, he really tried to force a difficult forehand. Um, that our mark wasn't giving him. He turned. He actually pivoted away from the field and appeared to lose sight of his receiver. And that's tough around the goal line because that's when poachers jump in. It's very cluttered there, and you really have to keep your eye on the guy. Um, Coming up here, uh, it seems like you're talking when we interviewed once. Uh, your fakes dictate incomes. Yes, and it seems like it happens here. Uh, yeah, I think when I think you make the incom. I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it definitely happens here. Um, Jake gets it here, and he's going to get it to James up here. And I, right here, I'm looking for the deep cut. I'm going deep. He pumps me, and I come in. Get it. He knows I'm coming in, so he pumps. I pivot, get the mark off, and throw the huck to Bart. That huck was actually meant for the far corner, and it floated in the middle of the field. And Bart did a fantastic job of boxing out his defender and pulling him in. That was really a key play in the game. Uh, it gave us an uh, early four goal lead. Um, we kind of established some superiority in the air. Um, and Bart 
going up against one of their big guys and, and pulling it in was big there. They were working from their end zone a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, our, our polls really were great at nationals. Um, we started actually in pool play a little bit. They were they were weaker, and we we worked on them. And you know, it's, it's it just helps so much to have that time before games to warm them up because most people never warm up their poles. And we have five or six guys that are out there pulling, and it, it takes a while to get a comfort zone there. Again, here we're we're making them work for it, and then put them back in. Uh, this is an incredible deal, sure, and it's closing at the end. He was. Were five to eight yards behind his guy when that huck went up and ran it down, closed ground. He's a fast guy. He's, pro he's probably the hardest worker on our team. He um, is always out there for the extra, st extra stadium and helps push the other guys. And he has in he has improved more than anyone on the team in the last couple of years. He's going to be an absolute star next year. We had him in a pretty reserved role back at CAG this year just because we felt we needed him back there and that he helped our team. Um, but next year he's going to be down the field more and be more dangerous. That was probably an ill-advised huck. The guy wasn't very open, but again, we're willing to take our shots and return it. We're not trying to play perfect offense. We're trying to play aggressive offense. Oh, this is a, the blade that went up pretty floaty. Danny Cox falls down. That makes a nice grab on it. Um, but we, we still felt pretty good at that point. We, uh, they, their first, their first goal was a stall nine huck, and that one was a one that either guy could have come down with. Their second point was a clean goal, a nice huck. But we felt like we were playing pretty good D and forcing them into difficult scores. Um, here's our ISO offense. Everyone goes to the side of the field, isolate one cutter, um, which is me in this case. Hunt makes a fantastic cut on his guy who actually made him fall down and he runs down the disc grabs it for the goal. Um, I, just had to, I was through all right. I just had to get it around the mark. He's playing me pretty straight up. He's got it out there. Every time, I mean, every time uh, they score, it seems like he came right back with like a really quick score. Yeah, our, our offense was really very good in this. When our O team was on the field, we tended to score, score quickly. Uh, it, I don't know, it, it's pretty important to, to stop streaks by the other team. And that was a fantastic beat. I remember that. I never saw that guy. He, uh, I tunneled a little bit looking to throw the goal, and he came out came out from the side and got a fantastic play on D. Um, here again, we're fast breaking quickly. Um, Dave gets a, a little bit lazy with his pivots there. And he didn't face the mark and got hand blocked with a nice mark. Get another, another drop. Game, this game got sloppy at times. There were a few more drops than would be expected, um, which tended to hurt them more than us. But here's kind of our offense going, swinging it off the line, and then Danny Cox. Danny's not one of our normal throwers. Um, just not one of our normal beats. That's an example of our guys playing really strong. Danny, that was a probably a 30, 40 yard outside in beautiful huck. And he's our fastest guy and one of our best deeps. And when he gets a comeback cut and can turn around and throw a huck for a goal, it's tough to stop. Jit's our primary handler. He's around the disc a lot, but he's also very fast and a dangerous deep threat because he's not expected to go deep. And so we took advantage of that. Did you tell him to have? Main offense from like, the game, it like you guys, you didn't bring it up. Yeah, we, we like to give people personal time to have. We, um, you know, we really stress the way you take care of your body during the tournament. Eating constantly, um, that's one of the things. We would take, we have energy bars, Fig Newtons, Gatorade, things like that. You know, go take a bite of a bar between points, stuff like that. Get a bar at halftime, drink some Gatorade, drink a lot of water. Uh, in the past years, we didn't do that as well. Some people would tend to bonk and not have the energy. Because the ultimate day is a tough day. You eat breakfast in the morning, and then you don't you never really have lunch, and things like that. You've got to eat regularly throughout the day if you're going to keep up a high level of play. And so we let people do whatever they need to do to get ready. Here's the second half. We're starting out on O, knowing that 
a goal here will pretty much put a hammer lock in the game. You want to, we, our goal coming out of half was to give them no hope of a comeback. And that's what we talked about. We wanted to stay aggressive, not get passive at all. We wanted to, to be the aggressors this whole game, um, wherever that took us. Wisconsin came out in their zone. It's a very good zone. They made us look around. Jit threw it up high to Hunt, which is always a good idea. He's our best leaper and has a huge body, um, and so he boxes out well. Jit and Shrey is working around, get it up to Keith. Um, that's just our general offense. Swing it. Swing it back and forth and look to break it through if we can. Um, Wisconsin is doing a pretty good job of pressuring. They're taking away the easy dumps and forcing our guys to move around and then getting it into a trap on the sideline. And it stays here for quite a while with a, a few fouls. <laughs> um, I, the guy was marking me pretty close, and I knew that if I faked forehand and pivoted backhand, he was probably going to foul me every time, and I was either going to get a throw off or get a new count. Um, I wasn't putting a shoulder into him to try and draw the foul, but just from the way he was marking, there was no way he couldn't foul me and still stop the throw, um, which is a problem actually a lot of guys have with their marks. They don't shuffle backwards when you pivot backhand, and you have to do that if you're not going to foul the guy. Um, but they kept it in the trap well here. They would let me get off a dump, but then they'd force it right back. Um, at this point, I could have thrown a hammer over to Jim. Mike Payne, my coach, is in my ear right now telling me to look at the cross field hammer. Um, and so I fake the blade up the line to one deep and draw the defender, get the guy to kick a couple steps, and then throw the hammer at James across the corner, um, which is actually not a throw that I normally do. I probably, I probably threw two or three hammers total in a game this year. But it was it felt right and it was set up really well and my coach was in my ear telling me to do it so <laughs> couldn't really be blamed if it went wrong. <laughs> so now we were just looking to to get some D's and really put the game away and really we never let up on D in this game. Got them to put up another floaty high hook and got our guys down there. We had two guys three guys, four guys in the area when that huck came down, running it down. Um, we actually s scored a lot of goals in this tournament, not in this game, but in this tournament on backsides of hucks that floated a little bit. And we kind of prided ourselves on out, out running and out hustling teams to, to throws like that. Um, here, Angel, another one of our guys, Chris Howie, um, not a hucker. He's a deep, but... Bart was open deep, and so he felt confident putting up the forehand from you know, 40, 50 yards out. And uh, apparently, Bart got hit on the arm by Bruss there. It was hard to tell from the sideline, but it wasn't contested, so it was a good call. Bart's one of our handlers that likes to throw scoopers on the goal line and will actually, along with me, looks for as his primary goal scoring look on the goal line, um, other throws being secondary. And so Danny Cox comes through here and he throws him the scooper for the ball. This was really an underused throw, especially in close quarters. It's very effective. You, just, you can get it off very quickly and pop it up over a defender um, on the goal line and get it to settle right into where you want it. One of the good things is I think we, we were able to get all of our players in it. Like we go very deep into our bench. We don't have a, a short core of people that play. We'll go. You know, I think everybody played in this game, and that's the case in most of them. Here, Jit throws up a blade to Hunt. Well, he makes a great catch. He really wasn't in the best position to get that. But broke to the disc harder and went to it and, and got through his man. And he's strong, and he, he can box out pretty well. And that was a pretty crushing score at that point. That made it um, I believe 10, that made it 11-3. Uh, and Ryan was kind of on the wall at that point. Hunt um, in general was very effective against Wisconsin in our two games at Easterns this year. He had a couple of massive skies. And so we kind of got him going in the second half. Again here we came out marking straight up and forced them backwards on their first several throws. Playing great D and making them lay out in their own end zone for dump passes and really on the hip of their guys. We spent a lot of time in practice working on the 
the smaller, the finer points of D, positioning, how much buffer to give, which way to turn your feet when a guy makes an in-cut on you, um, what throw is most dangerous, what you're going to give him, and how to use your mark to help you on D. And I think it really all came together for us by the end of the year. And you'll notice just about every mark is tough. We, we don't give up any easy throws. That one, the guy tried a very difficult round forehand break and threw it into one of our defenders. Bart walks up, Hunt catches his guy sleeping a little bit, and Bart floats it too much, but Hunt goes up and makes a great sky grab there and pulls it down. That's a 6 0 run. Yeah, that was a 6 0 run. That took it to 12 3. Um, Wisconsin t called timeout. We're, uh, the cell phone you see there, Dan Maidenberg, one of the main guys on our team, fifth-year player, uh, had to go to his brother's wedding back in Ohio, I believe, and gave him a lot of flack for that. He left right after our semifinal game, had to drive back to Seattle and take a red eye. And so he was on the cell phone almost the entire game, and we just kept that open and filled him in and kept him updated on it. We couldn't believe that his brother was scheduled his wedding for Nationals weekend. Again, that's a very effective pull. That Dave Cruz was our, our best puller by far, and he, he put up a number of just fantastic pulls in this game and really put Wisconsin back in a hole and let our defense get down and get set. Again, we transition zone here, and Wisconsin handled it well and just was very patient finding the open guy, and they get an open huck here. Um, Part of the reason that Huck was open, Jid had been, they're a little confusing, Jid had been telling Elliot to, to well, Elliot thought Jid had been telling him to throw this guy when he was saying, when he was really telling him that his, his man was getting frustrated and he was going to go deep, so he got burned deep. <laughs> uh, at this point, we actually, this is the first time I believe our O team turns it in this game. Um, we work it around, get the pull play going. Eventually, I'm going to get the disc on the sideline and have a guy open deep, but just let the disc tail out of bounds. Bad throw. If I threw that to the middle of the field, it was a goal. Um, he almost pulled it in. So we, we turned it over there. And uh, you're actually going to see on this. I believe it's this series, I don't think there's another turn first. Some great offense and great defense. Um, this, this is a man point, and it's going to take a lot of throws for them to, to eventually score this. We make them go sideways, make them do short throws, and they do it. Uh, they're very patient, they're sure with their hands here. They take their little up little upline cuts from their tags when they want to. Um, on D here, we're marking hard every throw, and we're defending hard downfield. Um, we're up 12-4 at this point, but we're still not relaxing at all on D, which it's one of the things actually our coach stressed is you just never, never want to give them any signs that you're letting up. Just make them know how hard it's going to be to come back, you know. Maybe they do come back. Maybe they put it together and put together a great series, but you make them know that they're going to have to battle for every point along the way. And that's what we do here. Um, they're, you know, over half field, and it's probably been close to 20 throws, and it's going to be quite a few more here. They go sideways, um, a lot of short throws, a lot of kind of stag tough throws back there, dumps, um, some stagnation downfield. Their cutters really aren't getting open, so they're but they're patient enough, and they're... They're working it to their dubs, who are all very talented. Then they get the upfield break from their CAG, get a couple breaks in a row, which our defense gets in trouble when they let those off, as most de defenses do, because we rely. We know our marks are good, and we rely on them. We play D, and so when a couple get broken in a row, we become very um, what, what happened in the semifinals, actually, with William and Mary, where they scores many points against us is they weren't necessarily breaking the mark, but they were willing to throw it to space and just put it out there for their guys without maybe a clear shot to it. They had very talented throwers. Um, 
whereas a lot of teams aren't comfortable with that. Okay, and our often our own team takes over here again, and this time we're working a little better. Um, get it good to Hunt. Hunt again. He's he's our best jumper, and he's primarily a deep. But he took an in comeback cut, turned and threw a 45 yard backhand to another one of our deeps, James Herbert, who is going to be fantastic. He's a sophomore, incredible player for a sophomore, and got the goal. And that's what makes our offense so dangerous: is that our, pl our players are versatile. I thought at this point, I, I read the team to summarize the game. You get the pull, which is very deep, and they can work it there. Creates a, a, a bad throw. Bad throw slash deep. And then, you know, your offense is able to move it up one. Yeah. Um, you know, on the field, if you if you look here and you compare compare who's on the field at this point to who started the game, there's maybe one person um, on the line. You know, we've got, we go deep into our bench here, and yet our, our offense still runs well. Um, everybody can still break the mark, they can pivot, they can do the dangerous throws. Maybe, you know, some, a lot of these players are a little bit less experienced, um, and so maybe the, the spacing isn't as, isn't as good, and they don't work with each other as well, and that's why there's some clogging. But, you know, still the fundamental offense is there and it, and it works pretty well. But Wisconsin actually played very good defense here on the goal line and really made us work, work for it for a while until we eventually turned it there. I feel, yeah, I feel like there was something called, oh, I think it was, there was an injury called prior to throw, which is always a weird call. The guy who actually laid out for that disc dislocated his shoulder in practice two weeks before nationals and decided to come out and play. Yeah. We actually had a problem with that. Our, one of our top rookies, who's going to be a star, no pop, uh, dislocated his shoulder on the last point of our last practice before we came to nationals. That was just tunneling again by one of our throwers. That was a tough throw. I think it was Danny who did that. Um, probably turn caused by impatience there. Wisconsin played very good D, and eventually we forced something, and that's what happens when you can when you stuff a team that for that long on the goal line. Eventually they're going to get antsy and, and try something they shouldn't try. But um, the team turns up the D again, and what you're going to see here is a. I believe it, it's going to be a great D on the comeback cut by Evan Pierce um, right here. Yeah. Uh, Evan came in from Rhode Island as a grad student this year. And great player. And it was just great, it was great to see him get that get the D there on the, the comeback cut. And just feels good to, to have your team still getting layout comeback Ds on, you know, one up 13-5 if they're still running that hard on D and not just waiting for the O team to do it. Uh, Zach Wyatt, and this guy has come probably as much as far as anyone in the last year. He's he's our webmaster, if anyone's been to our website. Uh, probably the best college ultimate website in the country for content and videos and pictures and everything, and he put that all together. We have a system in place where you know people can donate to our team using their credit card online, and it would be tax deductible and things like that, and it's just we we established a um, endowment this year with the goal of having players in the future not have to pay anything to play for Stanford Ultimate. Uh, we're trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars by 2011, I believe, and so he put all that together. And he he's really turning into an incredible player. He he was one that didn't didn't get a ton of playing time at the beginning of the year, and by the by nationals was on what was among the seven, eight, nine guys who would rotate in on the offensive points because he, he has some of the stickiest hands around. Great pivots. You can see it there where he really used the forehand fakes to open up the backhand. Um, and then eventually uh, Angel throws to Dave Kuzma, who was one of the captains, fifth year, uh, fifth year player, my roommate, uh, for, the, for the goal to take us to game point. And at this point we call timeout. And... In, in the huddle, we're talking, and coach, 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 coach,
Uh, if you guys are wondering why we call time out, they're really wondering. And it was just like, we're just looking at each other's eyes and feel like we wanted to end the game on, on D here. And so we put the line out there, and there's no way we, we want to. I mean, it would be okay to finish them out, but we could go and die on D all year. We want to finish the same on D. Johnson worked up pretty well here. Um, got a couple open throws. And got it up near our end zone pretty quickly. But our defense was able to recover in time and force them into a difficult draw. But I mean, that, that should have been a goal. And, you know, 99% of the time he catches that. And it was just one of those, it was one of those days for Wisconsin. They made a couple too many mistakes, a few too many drops. And it hurt because our team doesn't give the disc too much. Here you're going to see one of our worst offensive displays of the tournament. We called a play and there was confusion on who was where, and so nobody cut. And that left pretty much nobody open. And so it was kind of a punt punt that didn't pay enough. Um, just because I didn't want to turn on the goal line, that was still nine. Um, really, you know, we, we run, ran three or four plays most of the year and we ran them pretty well. But that time, it was just confusion on who was what number of the staff, and we didn't run it well. And that's what happens. Um, so we had to set it on D and try and get this back, and that's a great break cross field. And just, again, throw a little bit too far. Um, we came into Nationals talking, and it was it was going to be fundamentals and making plays that, that were going to decide who won it. And we felt like our fundamentals were as good as anybody. We stressed no drops, uh, worked on that in practice, worked on firing discs at each other and trying to improve our hands, and we figured that would take us through. Here's just a great offensive seek it, sequence to end it. Jit with his low backhand break. DiCarlo pivoting, throws an inside out break to me. Um, I find Hunt wide open in the middle with a flick. Hunt throws a couple fakes, um, pumps Brandon, he comes in, gets it, fakes four hands, he's barred in. Bart gets in at this point I break for the end zone and Bart gets me in stride with a great back hit for the win. Yeah, um, it was a pretty fitting, fitting way to end it. We um, had seven guys in the field in the last point and six of them touched it in that last offensive string to get it from end zone to end zone. Uh, it went jit to DiCarlo, to me, to Hunt, to Brandon, to Bart, and back to me. The only guy that didn't touch it, touch it was our dunk because we didn't we didn't need him. But that's the way our offense works. It's ISOed and it relies on everybody, and that was really demonstrated there. And no hard throws at all. On that. And then Payne, Mike Payne was totally stunned by the Gatorade bath. <laughs> he had no idea it was coming. He got him pretty good on that one. Still feel good watching it. It does. I've, there's a little highlight video on our website that I've watched many, many times. I actually, just two days ago, did summary write-ups for our web page on all, all the games at Nationals. Um, realized that I could still, you know, without, they weren't all on video, but I could picture every goal that we had scored in the game and knew who threw it uh, and who caught it. I have memory and things like that. And so, we get the, the champagne bath, <laughs> which we were very excited to have. It's a great picture of that on, on uh, Ben Wiggins. Yeah, um, I mean, our defense, our defense was intense and pretty relentless. It, you know, we didn't get every throw, but we made them hear footsteps, and you just, you get, you just want your defender, your the offensive guy to know that you're always there, and that nothing's going to come easy, and that they're going to have to work for it. Obviously, you're not going to get every disc, and you're not going to stop every throw. You want to make them know it's going to be hard, and I think we did that well, and I think that led to some of their drops, is that, you know, they knew they had to rush a little bit or reach out a little bit more, or we knew that the guy was going to be there. Um, we obviously, our fundamentals were better in that game. We, we didn't drop it, and we didn't throw it away for the most part. We had a couple bad throws, but not too bad.